Jeff Kuinange live here at Citizen Television. I tell you the tweets coming in so thick and so fast. People are so <laughs> <laughs> lean Jiru shows up and I tell you this whole place goes crazy because of the insights this man has from the time of Jomo Kenyatta to Daniel Arab Moy and now with President Uhuru Kenyatta. In fact, Francis Atwoli, who was my guest here last week, by the way, is just laughing his head off. He's saying, Lee is speaking a lot of sense and full of truth. I worked very closely with him because I am Kanu Damu. <laughs> I know Francis. He's my friend. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Asana. Long, long time friend. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I'm, I'm telling you the messages are coming in so thick and so fast. But let, let, let's, let's, let's take it one step at a time. So Moi takes over. You're still at State House. And you're, you know, obviously he's trying to settle in. Yes. And let's, let's fast forward because, you know, because of time, obviously. Let's, the first incident, and, you know, things seem to have been going very well. Yes. And then that coup in 82. Yes. Where were you that night, first of all? I was in Akuru. With him? Yes. You were there with him? Because yes. people say he went and hid in a bush somewhere when this thing was happening. Let me tell you. One of the most difficult undertakings in the state house was to guard and protect President Moy. You know, Jeff, it is very easy to protect a coward. Because if you tell him, duck, he will duck. Musa Moi is not a coward. Say, so, duck, duck, what for? Anybody who says that Musa Moi hid in a means of plantation is a liar. In fact, he wanted to come to Nairobi immediately. Yeah? He wanted to come to Nairobi immediately. In fact, you were restraining him. Because we had to get Brigadier Musomba mm -hmm. from Gilo Gil mm. to bring us armored cars. To drive to Nairobi? To drive to Nairobi. Because you see, what happened is that when it happened, the then escort commander was Elijah Sumbeiwo. Sumbeiwo, yes. His brother was a major in the army. Correct. Lazarus. Lazarus. Well, popularly known as Lazaro. Lazaro, yes. Who yes. was a major. So, Elijah telephoned his younger brother. By that time, he was M.A. to Mulinge, to General Mulinge. But he had asked for permission to come to Nakuru. Mm -hmm. So, Elijah telephoned his brother. He told him, the government is gone. He told him, what do you mean gone? The army has taken over. Army as, Air Force. as a military assistant uh, uh. to Molinge, he told his brother that it cannot happen. The military are on exercises in Turukana, 600 kilometers away. Who can take over the government? Because nobody believed that the Air Force, a small outfit, could take over the government. But then he was convinced. So he drove to State House, Major Sumbewa, and he collected a few general service officers. So he took them to Kabarak. From Kabarak, now the Major now, Lazaro, mm -hmm. and his brother Elijah, and Major Peter Ikenye, Peter Ngoge Ikenye, who was a Major then, and the ADC to the President. They are the people now who worked very fast, and then he got in touch with Brigadier Musomba, he brought a few <laughs> armored cars yes. to Kabarak. Musa refused to, to board when he said, I'm not a coward. In fact, he drove in his normal car. Come on. Yes. To Nairobi. To Nairobi. And when he came, he went around to check the damage. So went, come on, what, around where? Yeah, he went up to, uh, uh, to River Road. Yeah. But and, there, and, there and, were up, snipers. Up to, there were still... Yes. Now, that is why... The, uh, the security people are terribly agitated, but he said he didn't fear. He went around to see the damage. But then, when he was going around, the government had already been restored because uh, Brigadier, then Brigadier Lenges, had crushed 
and retaken like Kibya Yabis. Mm -hmm. Brigadier Mohammed then later became the chief of general staff. Yes. He retook voice of Kenya. Voice of Kenya. And Captain Jack it away and recaptured the Moy Air Base. Initially. Initially. Yes. And you know, when you look at that call, uh, Jeff, do not look at it in isolation. By that time, there were a series of coups in Asia and in Africa. Okay. Yeah? You remember, before that, 1979, the president of Korea, Park chung yeah. had been murdered yes. by a fellow from the, the, the Central in, for, uh, Intelligence, the Intelligence Agency Correct. in Korea. Yes. Yes. And you know, before that, after 1979, in and Egypt. Been, as I said, in, uh, in Egypt. In broad by daylight. His, yeah, by at, soldiers here. At a military y yes. parade. Yes. And before that, the same year, 1981, William Tolbert had been killed by his bodyguard. 1980. Yes, 80. 1980. Yes, by yeah, um, yeah. Samuel. Sam Samuel Do. Correct. Yeah, who was a master sergeant. Correct. He had just come from Germany to stand the bodyguard. Yeah. You're right. Yes. So there were a series of coups in Asia. Remember? 1984? Mm. Yeah. Indira Gandhi? Mm -hmm. Yeah. By his Sikh bodyguard? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. 87, Thomas Angara, by his body. Compaore. Uh, Compaore, Blaise Compaore. Yes. You know names, eh? Yes. You know your names. Yes. Okay, so after the coup, did, or let me put it this way. Did the coup change Moy as a, man, as a person? Did it, did it harden him? Because before that, he was, he was easy. Go, I mean, he was an easy going guy. Twice be, uh, once beaten, twice shy. Yes. He knew people were not kind to him. Yeah. So he had to tighten yeah. Yeah. his security apparatus. Did he lose trust in his, in his confidence in, in people? Uh, remember, two members of parliament, one from Kisi and one from Kakamega. Do you know what they did? They wrote letters to Yano Mulinge. Please do not forget to include me in your new government. So when the government was retaken, the letters were already in the post office. So Mulinge showed Muzay Moi, look at your people. They had already written to General Mulinge? Yes. Because they had assumed that he's the one who was going to take over power? Yes. Or? Yes. Yes. The one from around Kakamega decided to die early. <laughs> he could not live with the shame. <laughs> Goodness. <laughs> okay. So now, yes. I don't know to, to tell you the names, yeah, but you, you can check. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Do your research. You do your research. Is that right? Yeah. But now, in such a situation, can you trust somebody fully? Mm. No. No. Okay, you were in inside the kitchen, right? So was he was he disappointed? Was he uh, uh, hurt? You know, like this thing. How could it happen to me? Yes. Why me? I mean, he, was it something? That, that, that's natural, Jeff. Yeah, that is natural. That is natural. Was he ever the same after that? Uh, I don't want to talk too much about that, but. Uh, you are a grown-up. You can check. How can you be the same when you are only people are betraying you? Mm. Yes. How can you be the same? You have to do some readjustments. Yeah. Yes. Oh, the difference is the severity of the adjustments. Yes. Yeah. Once beaten, twice shy. That's it. Yeah. You become more careful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Look, you were again in the kitchen. What was it like being so close to power? What was it like? Give us a couple of examples. Um, I never, never knew about power until around 1981. Before that, I was just an ordinary worker. I didn't take notice of 
this ordinary power shenanigans. I was just uh, an ordinary worker. But I came to know, I came to know about the power 1981. Mm -hmm. That was the time of the 34th United Nations General Assembly. In New York? In New York. Mr. Moy sent Professor Julia Ujiambo, who was then as a minister for education, to lead Kenya's delegation. Okay. But uh, on arrival in New York, she was not allowed by the then Secretary General Kurt Waldheim. Kurt Waldheim. From uh, Austria. Yes. To participate. Why not? She forgot to carry the credentials. No. Yes. She forgot it in Kenya. Yes. And, and there's no uh, uh, DHL or there's no fa scanning? Or no, no, by that no. time, everything was analog. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, 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 by that time, there was no fax. Yes. <laughs> yeah, no scanning? Yeah. yeah no no scanning. WhatsApp? Yeah, yeah, nothing. Do you know what happened? Uh -huh. Go on. Musa Moy called me. Was given money by the office. First class ticket. Yeah, ticket. Huh? Yeah, British Airways. <laughs> and I was told, these are credentials. You take them to Professor Ujiambo. She is stuck in New York. She cannot attend the meeting, the United Nations General Assembly. I started trampling. I went and bought a, po a, po a polo neck, a tato neck. You know? yes, yes. Then I put the documents here <laughs> and a belt. <laughs> So that you don't lose now, it. Yes. Do, do you know who met me at the Heathrow? He, he, Heathrow. Heathrow. Uh, do you know who met me? Tell me. Shandraka Kimale. Kenya has a high commissioner in London. And do you know it is not Jiro who was being met? It was the parcel. I was part of the packaging. <laughs> <laughs> Which was still in your turtleneck. Yes. yes. With the belt. Kimale was coming to Heathrow to meet the package. The package. Yes. So then it was put on another plane. Yes. British to Airways. To New York. To New York. First class. First class. Uh, and you know it is not Lee Jiro <laughs> was traveling in first class. <laughs> it was a package. <laughs> Do you know who met me? In New York. Do you know who met Go me? Go on. Go on. Three people. One, the permanent rep, Charles Maina. Huh? Do you know who else? Go on. It's a deputy, Mr. Kasina. Do you know who else? The press attaché, Kumbu Chokwe. My friend. Do you know, do you know who, what they were meeting? The package. The package, not <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> so you've traveled from Nairobi to New York first class. Yes. You've been met there, and then you finally meet Dr. Julia Jumbo. Yes. You, you present the package. No. Uh -huh. I gave the package to Charles Maina. Uh -huh. I, a permanent rep. Yes. Then I went to the hotel or put in a very beautiful hotel. Do you remember the name? I don't remember the name. Okay. But it was a good hotel. Okay. Very good. Yes. I called Muse Moy, the mm. president. Mm -hmm. I told him I have delivered the package. He told me, I know. Hey. Hey. What do I do, sir? Stay there. So after about uh, a week, Mr. Moy flew to New York. Oh. Yes. And you're still there? Yes, I was still there. You're enjoying New York? Are you playing with the power? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I drank something which is not water. <laughs> I was excited. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he comes a week later, yes, and then you all go back eventually. You all go home eventually. No, uh. no, 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 no. When he came there, he addressed the United Nations General Assembly. Right, the GAS. Yes. yes, and before he left New York, oh, he threw a party for the Kenyans uh, residing in uh, New York. Mm -hmm. Uhuru -huh was part of the, that, that group. What do you mean? Yes, President Uhuru. Yes, he was there. As a student in, in, in Boston? Yes, as a student. Uh, do you know what? Moy took him by the hand and they went at a corner. And they talked something. 
we don't know what they talked about. <laughs> <laughs> and I could see it doing it like this. Yeah. Yes. From there, we went to Washington. Okay. We met Mayor Marion Barry. Marion Barry, yes, yes, I remember him. Yes. Now, from there, we went to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. We were given lunch by the then mayor of Los Angeles, Thomas Brandley. Tom Bradley. You know, you know, you know, uh, you know the Bradley effect? Yes. Yes. Tom Bradley. <laughs> yes, of the Bradley effect. Correct. Know? In elections. In elections, yes. Thank you. So, I want to tell you another aspect of power to give impetus to what I've just told you. Go on. When Mr. Moy was descending the stairs. Of the plane? No, from the home of a residence of the mayor. Uh -huh. His button, his ivory button, fell and broke. Fimbo yanyayo. Fimbo yanyayo. It fell. Yes, and it broke into two. My friend, we were handing to Melbourne, Australia. From, from LA, from Los Angeles? Yeah, from, from Los Angeles. To attend Chogim, Commonwealth Hands of Government Meeting. Yes. In Australia, they were calling it cheap holiday on government money. <laughs> Chogim, yes. cheap holiday on government money. <laughs> yes. Okay. That's where you were heading now. Yes. But then, the room but then we could not Fimbo travel. has fallen. Yes. So we had now to stay for some time in Honolulu, Hawaii. Because we telephoned in Nairobi, we got one of Muse's personal assistants called Peter Rotich. We told him, take two ivory buttons, go to Southern Africa, take counters, fly across Southeast Asia. We meet you in Sydney. Oh, I'm sorry. wait a minute. So, <laughs> so Fimboy Anyayo has fallen and broken. Yes. He's got a couple of spare ones in State House, Nairobi. Yes. You are on your way to Australia, but you're transiting in Honolulu, Hawaii. Yes. You call Nairobi, you yes. tell Rotich, yes. meet us in Australia. Uh, yeah, Sydney in Australia. Sydney. Yeah. And get there before we get there. We get there. Because when the Muse is descending from his plane, he must greet the people. You know, it was a symbol of authority, it was akin to Muse's to Mr. Kenyatta's fly whisk. Correct. Yes. So Rotich, he yes. flies to Joburg, yes. takes Qantas, yes. straight to Sydney? Yes, to Sydney. Are you guys, have you arrived And then we are flying. You know, we lost a Monday because we crossed the international date line. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so does Rotich get there before you? Yes. So when we landed, Rotich boarded the plane. Mr. Moy left with it. And nobody knew what happened. Oh yeah. my now, God. Now, I traveled first class because of Tentatious. Yes. Rotich because of Ivory Button. Yes. Now, that is the time I started appreciating power. But again, if you are an idiot, you think it is your power. Yeah. It is called borrowed strength. Never boost. It's not yours. It can be taken away. That's where people make mistakes. Mm. You start boosting around, you know. Yeah. yeah. You are not a piece of the president. No. You are just a messenger. Yes. <laughs> You're not Serkal. You are not Serkal. No. Yeah. Correct. In, in my place where I come from, when I was Marisa Nikutume, you are told to take that quickly. So that I said to you, Marisa Nikutume? Yeah. Yeah. Mimi ni Marisa Nikutume. Nina Nikutume. Nikikuyu. Yeah. Yeah. Rabbi Marisa Nikutume. Yes. Any Marisa Nikutume? Nikutume. Yeah. Don't think you are a piece of the president. You're not. Yes. And every time, you must kneel down and pray to God in order to be cognizant of that fact. Yeah. Yeah. Because sometimes you, may, you might get lost. Okay. So on weekends or, you know, in when it was time, because Mo used to move around a lot, right? He was very active. We, we, sometimes we would address 27 meetings in a day. Come on. Yes. Uh, um, this place, uh, Otali College, um, Kenyatta University, Junja, Thika, Makutano, Mwea, Moranga Teachers College, 
<laughs> uh, same day. Same day. What time would you wake up? What time would you wake up? Uh, uh, five thirty. Every day. No, no, no. Mr. Mo used to arrive at State House at six thirty every day. But when we are going on safari, like when traveling to Arusha, we wake up at three. We go to Kabanet in Ghana at three a.m. Three a.m. Yes. Three a.m. By seven thirty, we are in Arusha having a breakfast. When people wake up, people, some people like um, Ole Tip Tip, John King, yeah. they wake up to go and uh, receive at Namanga. But told him, say, pass, pass through here uh, two hours ago. <laughs> 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 You're too late. Too late. Yes. Yes. I'm a Peter. I'm a Peter. No, I'm a Yes. Oh, man. You know, Mr. Moi, under, under core of steel, he could travel like lightning. You know, even when it is raining. And you know there's lightning up there. We told him it is raining. He said, no. Even small planes, we shall settle accounts with the lightning up there. <laughs> <laughs> what would we call you? Hmm? What did he call you? Who? President Moy. Lee. He called you Lee. Yes. Ukwapi. Not uh, Kahe. No. Ka no, no, no. <laughs> let's, let's take a look at some tweets. Monica, is that okay? Yes. <laughs> this is... <laughs> this is fascinating stuff. Yes, yes. Okay, tweets. Here we go. <clears throat> Jemo Wamatunda, you say Lee Njiru clearly knows a lot that he needs to write a book to be read by generations. Smoking already with Lee Njiru. You hear that? That book that's coming, eh? Yeah? Yes. Benteke Mwanasoka, you say a real living, walking, talking encyclopedia of Kenyan history and more so a legend. Mosmark, you say, I used to be, you know, I used to like the presidential press service report by Lin Jiru when the president was out of the country, especially the parting shot. The one I closely remember is when he said, Usim Tusi, Usim Tukane, Wala Usim Darao, Alie Kuumba, Ndie, Alie Muumba. That's what you said one time? Yes. Do you remember that? Ah, uh, I remember saying it, but I cannot know exactly when uh -huh. I used to say that. Yeah. yeah. That was tough. <laughs> Moses Kim Ngatich, he said, what an icon and encyclopedia of history. Lin Jiru, he must have been a friend indeed to Mze. Katebi Saddam Kibet, he say, this is no doubt, there is no doubt that Mze Njiru has a great mind. He remembers every detail of Mze's times. He should work on an autobiography. We've talked about that. Beki Muirori Mulure, you say, it is so good listening to Lee Njiru. Wow, he is a wealth of history. I've grown up watching him on TV. He always put on a tough face. I have seen him laugh today for the first time in my life. Thank you, <laughs> That was funny stuff. Collins of Bore, you say, Lee is so articulate. I can almost see President Kenyatta from the kind of descriptions he gives. I like his sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Roba Bob, you say, Lee Jiro is so intelligent. How does he remember all those events at his age? Jeff, kindly ask him to put his great memories into a book. Absolutely. SMSs. Jane Motiga Madenge from Nanyuki you say, Jeff, thank you for bringing Lee to the show. Oh my, he is taking us down memory lane. I danced for the late Mze Jomo Kenyatta on several occasions as a teenager. Lee, I admire your guts. May you live long as you continue to inspire the people. Jane Motiga Madenge danced for Mze as a teenager. <laughs> Moments. Esther from Kilimani says, Jeff, thank you for this interview with Mr. Lee Njiru. My father used to take us to Mombasa State House every evening to watch the entertainment and more so to be with our loved president. Lee should come more often to remind Kenyans the forgotten history. Bravo. Eulalia or Eulalia Namai, you say, Jeff, this is a wonderful interview with Linjiru. Linjiru brings good memories of the 70s and 80s. The 30 days of mourning brought out the best of Linjiru. Congratulations for the decades of outstanding work. Mm -hmm. Blaise Agitonga, you say, the greatest interview I have ever seen in a long time. Linjiru is a great Kenyan icon. Can't wait for the book release. You are an inspiration. Do you have a working title for the book yet? The Power of Power. The Power of Power. Yes. Very nice. A couple of Facebook posts. 
Sorry about that. Here we go. Uh, Robert Okachi say, ask Lin Jiru how President Kenyatta used to relate with Jam Jaramogi Oginga Odinga and what brought about the bad blood and the eventual fallout. How did they used to relate? J well, you were there in 77, right? Yes, I was there. And uh, Jaramogi was... Ah, he, was, he had already been banished. Yeah. Yes. That's right. That was the uh, 60s. That was 60s, yeah, late yes. 60s. Yes. That's right. Okay. Uh, tabs, Tabby. Lee is articulate and his memory is something else, no doubt. Steve Amondi, Lin Jiru, kudos, you are a true mentor. First time to see you laugh and smile. <laughs> Indeed. Derito Tom, Jeff say hi to Mze Lee. Tell him I like his advice. I'm Thomas Derito, Boda Boda, who jump starts his motor vehicles at his Nakuru home. Thanks so much for hosting him. <laughs> You know him? I know him. Boda Boda? Yes. Huh? Yes. Okay. <laughs> when my cast is for too long. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. My goodness. It's been a, a fascinating time, my friend. Fascinating. And uh, <clears throat> you have that book to write, which you promised us already? Yes. I'm, I'm writing it already. Final thoughts about the last 41 years. Because let's face it, very few people will ever have that access that you had the closest to power, everything that you were in the presence of. Your final thoughts. Give us some final thoughts. If you are working for a president, never keep the Bible far from you or from yourself. Because the devil is always at work. When you see yourself with the president, mm. after five years with the president, you start thinking that you are a politician or that you can make a politician. <laughs> I have known some people, they think the power of the presidency has rubbed on them. I've seen some people going to politics in order to be like the president. I know one, I don't, I don't want to mention the names. Yes. One went there, he got only 3,000 votes. <laughs> and his opponent? Uh, uh, 26,000 votes. <laughs> yeah. He came back crying, and he realized it's too, uh, too late yeah. that he was nothing. He was just a clerk. Yes. Do you know what happened? Go on. He came back with a bad temper and evil thoughts. Remember, when you tell your wife to give you scissors to go and shave people, make sure that you do not come limping and shave yourself. Because your wife will ask you, you told me you are going to shave people. You look shaven and you are leaving. What happened? You say, you woman, don't talk to me like that. Uh, what do you know about shaving? My friend, yeah. don't lose temper. It is you took yourself there. Mm -hmm. Do not offload your anger. Do not offload your frustrations on other people. Take it easy. If you are working for the president, the Bible must be near you to guide you. You are a small man. You are just like his, his hand. You are just his tool. You are not the boss. Yeah. Those are my final thoughts for those people who work for presidents and the VIPs. Couple of final uh, SMSs and uh, um, messages. Silas Jakikamba. Jakakimba, mm -hmm. sorry. Mm -hmm. You know him very well. He says, yes. very interesting insights here by Nyayo's Fly on the Wall. That should be the name of your title of the book, by the way. Fly mm -hmm. on the Wall. Mm -hmm. Salimia Linjirusana, mm -hmm. I've always desired to see this man in, uh, directly and in person. Davy Koech. Yes, he I says, know him. Jeff, say hi to my friend Linjiru. He mm -hmm. has been my friend for decades. Yes. He has also been faithful and loyal to Mze Moy. Tell him thank you, Davy Koech. You have been very loyal. 
but I like that title, Fly on the Wall. Yeah, okay. That, that would be very nice. Yeah, listening. <laughs> <laughs> Linjiru, thanks so much. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. Thanks for your time. Uh, people have said that you have been a very elusive uh, interviewee. Yes. It's very difficult to get you. And by the way, I have tried for many, many years, right? Yes. You know this. Yes. I've asked you for many years to come on the show, yes. and you always turned me down. Yes. But everything has its time, right? Are you going to buy me something which is not water? <laughs> <laughs> on that note, <coughs> thank you very much. Yosi Wazikata. Lean Jiru, folks. What a fascinating man. Walking, talking, encyclopedia of history. I hope you learned a bit of history as much as we did tonight. It's just been off the chain. If we had more time, coach. We would have enjoyed it. But you know what? This is good enough for us. There's a book coming out. Look out for it. Lean Jiru's. It's going to be a page turner. No doubt. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. You know, if it's a Wednesday, it's those three letters on the keyboard that follow each other. J-K-L. And coming up this Sunday on Sunday Live, another fascinating interview. Monica, do we have a little tease? Go on, let's, this let's week, take a look. On Sunday Live, we have an exclusive interview with the man who was not only secretary to the cabinet but head of civil service. He was also the first African to be appointed central bank governor, Governor Duncan Dago. Thank you very much. Good to see you. Yeah. All right. That's all this week on Sunday Live. You remember that man? Who? Duncan Dago. Of course I do. You know, he's in his 90s now. Yes, I know. <laughs> he's in his 90s. Yes. Plays golf three, two, yes. three times a week. Yes. yes. And still very lucid. Yes. He's going to be my guest on Sunday. I'll watch. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and you watch as well. And keep tweeting at Queen Anger Jeff at Citizen TV Kenya. The hashtag, as always, is JK Live. We'll see you in a few hours' time. Jeff in the morning on Hot 96, the biggest breakfast show in all of Africa. Stay tuned. Oh, by the way, we have Governor. Wambora on our show tomorrow. Martin Wambora, a fellow Emben. Monica, your people are dominating all these networks. <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. Thanks so much for being a part of the show. Good night. Good luck. God bless this amazing country of ours.